once you've made all the changes that you want to do, simply go up to File and Save As. You'll save as to whatever file name you want it to be. So uh, if, if you don't mind writing over your old map, then just hit File Save. But if you want to save it as something new because it's something you want to try and upload, that's perfectly fine. Nevertheless, I'm not going to make any changes to this particular map for this particular illustration. But after you save them, whatever map is showing up here is the map that's going to get uploaded into the ECU. So if you want to actually program the ECU, I'm going to turn the key on right now. I'm going to hit ECU, connect. You'll see down here, it's connecting if everything's okay. Uh, it'll show the VIN is here. No window will come up saying that you're not licensed to do it. Uh, you can go to your vehicle info and see the calibration ID, where the definition file is located, that it's a Lotus, it's a 2005, and the VIN number. If I go over here to ECU and I go to write, it will give me a series of steps. Please turn the ignition key off. I just turned it off. I click right here. It's doing a power down sequence of the ECU right now. Then it's going to prompt for me to turn the ECU on. This takes about 15 seconds to upload. When I turn the ECU on, it should make the uh, screen go away automatically. So it's updating the tune. This is a T4 2005 car. If it were a T4E, this takes about 40 seconds instead of 15 or so seconds. At the conclusion, it's going to tell me to turn the key off. Turn the key's off. It's going to go through a power down sequence. Now we'll turn the key back on, press the button. And then it's going to ask me to do this one more time. And the key's on. It's happy. If I want to view gauges, I'm going to start this car. All right, now the car is started. The ECU is connected. I can go to view gauges. It'll bring up what's going on in the car. You can see the RPM, short-term fuel trims. Usually when the car is cold, it might be trying to pull some fuel out. It's pretty normal. Here's the load where it's idling at about 44. This is sitting in the shop right now, so the intake temps are about at ambient temperature. The target AFR is 14.6. Short-term fuel trims have now gone to negative 12 and so, and that's normal while the car is nor uh, warming up. I want to see other things that are going on, I can go to view, data list. As I see the data list, anything that's in green it's looking at. Um, if I want to see the engine coolant, here it is in degrees Celsius. I want to see mass airflow IAT, this is a digital number, not too relevant for most people. Here's the throttle position in percentage, it's zero. If I give it more, you can see it go up. This VVTL, whether it's on or not, right now it's zero, meaning that it's not on the high cam. Anything that you put in green here will data log. So if you turn this on and that goes to a 1.0, that means that the big cam is engaged. This is the fuel level as the ECU sees it, which is at 68% right now. Uh, ECU voltage, 14.4. Here's the cam angle. This car idles at around 10 on the intake cam you'll notice that it changes as the tip end goes in. If I want to data log this information, I go to ECU. I can either hit Control D or I can just click data log. Right now, it is data logging because I clicked it and I can verify that by this check mark. There's no other indication that the car is data logging other than that check mark. When I am done data logging, I can click this again. That has finalized that data logging final. And you'll notice that there's no check mark here. If I want to see where that data log was changed, I can go to Preferences. I can go to Paths, see where it says Logs. My logs end up in the Layouts folder. It's perfectly fine. And then within my Layouts folder, there will be a CSV file that I can open up with Excel. It's really all there is to making a change to a file and uploading a new one. You can actually also live tune these by going to ECU, Live Tune. 
If I click Live Tune, it'll ask me to write the file. It's going to write this file into the volatile memory. That takes a few seconds. If you come down over here, notice that it's writing the current file into the ECU, into its volatile memory. It'll eventually then, after a few seconds here, be running the car off the volatile memory only. And then any changes that we make will show up, uh, show you here, just uh, by changing the idle, for instance. It's almost done uploading the file. Don't make any changes while it's doing this upload. It says it's in sync. That in sync may go away over time. It's not a big deal. So notice we still have our gauges up. I'm going to come down here to idle. I'm going to go to uh, base idle speed. What you find here, if I click this little L that's live view, it'll show where it's idling. And just to demonstrate a point, I'm going to highlight these two cells so that it's kind of in between two. I'm going to start increasing this number significantly. Notice how the idle is now up in this 1400 range. If I decrease these values, back down to 1000, notice the idle is coming back down. Now it's still on its warm up ramp, but you can see that idle coming back down to a target that's close to 1000 RPMs. As you can see, LiveTune is pretty handy. If we want to make any changes on LiveTune, again, any changes that we make in the ECU while it's running will be lost once the key's off. So if you make a change here and you want to retain that change, simply go up to File, Save. And that'll save that file on your computer. Once you turn the key off, you'll simply write that file to the hard memory in the ECU after you're done making changes while it's live. Hopefully that helps explain some of the features of the software. It's pretty slick. I think you'll enjoy it.